My camera is being a gammon, but that doesn't mean I can't dig into the bowels of Bladeborne allies. Welcome to War Games and Toast, all of you lovely people. It's me, it's Toast. How are you this fine Wednesday? Today we are sidestepping away from full faction guides and instead dabbling in one of the most interesting aspects of Warcry. That's right, Underworlds. Okay, 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 not actually Underworlds. Today I am looking at Bladeborn allies, more specifically the rather wonderful Hexbane's Hunters. Before we get onto all of that, please consider leaving a like, a comment and subscribing as it helps me fight against that dastardly YouTube algorithmic demon. And if you want to help support the channel in a more tangible way, then please consider joining my Patreon or my YouTube members like all of these awesome people on screen now. You'll receive cool benefits like members only online content, videos and a say on future projects and monthly giveaways. But with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the show. While I am only going to cover Haskell and his Hexbane Hunters, I think it makes sense to quickly go over what Bladeborn are and what makes them different from your standard allies. Firstly, every Bladeborn warband belongs to a Grand Alliance and that Grand Alliance dictates which faction a Bladeborn warband can be a part of. So far, so good. Things get funky when you dig a little bit deeper though. If you look at the stat cards of a fighter, you can see their faction rune mark. If this Bladeborn fighter shares the same faction rune mark as another faction, they can be allied in, even if they don't have the hero rune mark. So, for example, Luxa Stormrider is from Zandaya's Truth Seekers, but she also has the Stormcast Eternals Thunderstrike faction rune mark, allowing her to be allied into any Thunderstrike warband, even though she is not a hero. But that's not all. If if you take a Bladeborn ally who has the hero rune mark, then you can also ally in any fighter from that warband in addition, even if they don't share the faction or the hero rune mark. These additional fighters do not count towards your ally cap either. So for example, if you took Kalthea Zandaya, you could theoretically ally in Luxa Stormrider, and this would still only count as one of your ally slots. And finally, you cannot take the same fighter multiple times. These are all unique fighters and they cannot be duplicated. Bladebone allies are very powerful as you can well imagine. Just being able to break the ally cap is enough to raise some eyebrows, but looking into some of these Bladebone warbands really opens up what you can do with list building. But that's enough of the preamble, let's jump into Hexbane's Hunters and see what they are all about. Hexbane's Hunters are part of the Order of Azir and have the Order of Azir faction rune mark. As of recording, there are no other warbands in Warcry that share this rune mark. This means if you want to take any non hero fighters from this warband, you must take Haskell Hexbane first. The warband is comprised of six models Haskell Hexbane, Quiet Park, Amos Duncaro, Bridget Axwald, Grotbiter and Ratspike. Hexbane and Co have one shared reaction, although it is very important to note that Grotbiter and Ratspike do not have access to this reaction at all as they lack the required warrior rune mark. The reaction is Grim Resolve and Grim Resolve allows you to react after you have been targeted by an enemy fighter and then before any dice are rolled you can heal d3 wounds. This reaction is kind of okay, most of your fighters are low to middling levels of durable so being able to survive an extra hit or two can come in handy. This is especially true when you're trying to hold objectives or carry the treasure token. Pull this out of your hat and then boom you might just live. The biggest downside is the heal happens before you take damage, which makes sense, but it also means if you're at full wounds and something big and burly kills you in a single action, you don't get to heal. Your resolve may be grim, but it won't stop instant death. Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Hexbane and his buddies only have one shared ability and this ability, like their reaction, cannot be used by Grotbiter or Ratspike. It is their quad and it is called Hallowed Vengeance. This is a super restrictive ability that requires a lot of setup and, well, a quad. An ally has to have died the activation before, your guys need to be in position around the thing that killed your mate and then if that all goes to plan, they all get to attack if they are legally able. This can work but the effort required to get this to work is way too high. So high in fact I have never got to use this because it's never been worth it over just using a rampage. 
And now we get onto the hunters that make up Hexbane's hunters and of course we start with Haskell Hexbane himself. Haskell is the hero of the warband and is required if you want to take him and his mates anywhere. Thankfully he is far from a tax. Haskell comes with two offensive profile, one 1 inch melee at 4324 and one 8 inch range attack with a 3413 profile. Both of these profiles come on a solid body to boot with movement 4, toughness 4 and 20 wounds for only 125 points. Haskell as a ball of stats is super solid, like you are never unhappy to have him around. He can take a hit, he can poke with his pistol and he's not bad in melee. Throw in his triple, brand of righteousness and you can boost your damage all the way to 43210, which is rather hilarious and can do catastrophic damage when things go your way. Haskell is just a really solid bloke, you have to take him, but he does just enough to warrant that price tag. Moving on, we have Quiet Pock is the best model in this warband by a country mile and is the real reason you consider Order of Azir as allies. Pock is 150 points, made of toughness for paper, but has one of the best value range attacks in the entire game. 15 inches of range, 3 inches minimum, 2, 4, 3, 6. Give him plus 1 strength on that shot and you have a 165 point model who can blow holes in just about anything. Pock is pure threat projection. You have Pock and you control space. He can't be ignored because his damage is far too high. The majority of things that can get to Pock and kill him are far more expensive and that makes him a fairly solid distraction con effects to boot. Pock's double explosive bolt is just icing on the cake. 1 to 3 damage in a 3 inch explosion is great AOE and again people will likely play around this because they don't want to take massive chunks of damage. A trick I like to pull is firing Pock at one dude and if they survive on 3 or less wounds, fire my second shot at the guy next to him and have the explosion kill the first laddie. And since Pock has such a high damage profile, this can actually lead to very impressive double kills. It's important to note that Pock's explosive bolt does not deal its AOE damage to the thing you fired at originally and it does not proc on crits. You must hit once to trigger that boom. And remember this one trick. Just because Pock can't fire into combat with his crossbow bolt does not mean you can't kill somebody with the explosion if they are standing too close to a guy not in combat. The only real downside to Pock is against things that are toughness 5 or above or toughness 5 in cover is that he is a little bit unreliable at landing those big juicy hits. But against your average warbands as in toughness 3, toughness 4 dudes, Pock is amazing. If you want a powerful ranged threat in your warband, Pock is the one you go to. The combination of Pock plus Haskell is only 290 points if you give Pock that plus one strength and you get an awful lot of bang for your buck when you bring those two together. Amos Duncaro is another solid pick in a similar manner to Hexbane. Amos has a 3524 profile, movement 4, toughness 4 and 15 wounds for 105 points. He has no unique abilities but what he brings is a fairly solid block of stats that can be brought in to bulk up some numbers in more elite warbands. I do often cut him from my list for something a little bit more interesting but he's a very solid bloke through and through. Bridget Axwald is interesting, 95 points net to a fragile model with movement for toughness 3 and 10 wounds, but it also gives you a fairly interesting offensive profile. She has a 1 inch 3323 three, and a 6 inch 2523 two, profile, with that range profile being the one you care about the most. She does reliable damage at a decent range with no minimum, which means she can shoot both in and into combat. Not only that, but she can't be countered to death in response since it's still a ranged attack. Similar to Amos, I tend to cut Bridget to spend points elsewhere, but she's always a consideration for the added ranged threat at an acceptable price. Grotbiter and Ratspike are two doggos that are functionally identical. For 55 points a pop, you get movement 6, toughness 3 and 6 wounds, and a 2323 offensive kit. For 55 points, this kind of speed is just great value. These dogs serve two purposes when allied in with Haskell. Fast moving harriers, distractions, objective grabbers, 
or a means to increase your warband size if your warband doesn't have access to cheap chaff. These dogs will almost certainly die on first contact, but their speed allows them to get to where you want them to be and pull off all kinds of daring gambits. Older warbands can struggle to kill things like the Fomroid Crusher, Tyrants and the like. With Grotbiter and Ratspeg, you don't necessarily have to kill them right away, you can just get in their way and force your opponent to kill them. A 55 point dog stopping a 300 point titan from meaningfully interacting with the board state is great value. These two dogs are not as flashy as Paco Haskell, but provide a service that many warbands can benefit from. Overall, Hexbane's Hunters are pretty darn amazing. They have given Order a Bladeborne faction they can use as a quick fix to many problems. Just taking Hexbane and Pock is enough to really elevate a list to the next level. If you have the points, inserting Rotbiter and Ratspike can help you with objectives, threat management, and general tomfoolery. Amos and Bridget might not be as outstanding, but they get the job done and can be solid additions if you have the points and want their brand of stats and cost. A key takeaway here is that you get a lot of power when you take Hexbane's Hunters, but that power needs additional support to sing. Your tangible board murdering power comes from Pock, and if you want to make the most out of this model, you need to be aware of two things. One, he can and will die, and two, two shots per action is very unreliable. If you want to maximise your effectiveness, you need to consider bringing support to offset these two issues. Firstly, being dead. That's not great. And as good as distracting people can be, you don't want Pock getting murked turn 1 before he can leverage his damage. To prevent death, try to deploy Pock into cover or ideally elevated. This makes him so much harder to kill since it's harder to get to him. Secondly, bring something really threatening in his battle group to disincentivize that assassination attempt. I personally really enjoy bringing a Grand Hammer Prime to babysit turn 1 before he walks away to do more important stuff. Alternatively, you can bring models to simply body block. Ratspike and Grotbiter are fairly solid at this role if you want a very cheap option. If you want to get the most out of his damage, you need to include some form of action economy manipulation. This can be through the use of the Flame Seeker Drothmaster and his Creed of Flame ability, Kalthia Zandai and her coordinated strike ability, or any Caradon Overlord hero packing the fight for profitability. All of these can enhance Pock's effectiveness and help offset the swingy nature of 2d6 rolling. The rest of the warband, well, they need less babysitting and support as they do the Lord's work without it. And that's it. That's the end of this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried out Haskell and his pals, and if so, how have they fared for you? While you're down there, please consider leaving a like and subscribing too, as it helps out the channel an awful lot. Also, if you haven't already, check out 3 Heroes 1 Chaff. These are some of the best Warcraft players I know. They are pillars of the online community and they have finally united to form their own awesome channel. Give these guys some love. As always, a huge shout out to all my patrons and members who help the channel grow and improve. Massive shout out to the Algorithmic Demon Slayers, Armor Enthusiast 7, Brioche, Head Knight of Paint, Kiplang, Kitty Cowan Pracker Makul, Long Run Hobbies, Lord Phylax, Rob, Scully Gaming, and Velas. Until next time, lads, ladies, and everyone in between and beyond, I will see you in the next video. Ta ra.